Hi and welcome back. So we're able to create events here with our modal to view the events and for events we didn't create we can even book them. Or at least we'll be able to do that at the end of this video because right now we only see that modal but at the end of this video we'll be able to make a booking and see our bookings so that only the feature to cancel a booking is missing thereafter. So let's dive in and let's make sure we can book ourselves some events. So let's make sure we can finally also book an event. We got this book button here after all, so of course it should do something. Now back in the code, if we have a look at our schema here, we see that for booking we have the book event um, endpoint we can target, which requires just an event ID. So for that, in the events page there, we got that modal with the book button and uh, we got the book event handler in there as well. Here it is. Now I want to send a request to the backend when this handler here, this method runs. So we can actually of course go to fetch events there and um, use that logic. We can copy that whole request logic here and move that into the book event handler. And now in the book event handler, obviously I'll not send a query but a mutation because if you have a look at the schema again, um, it's a mutation book event is a mutation. The name is then book event and the argument name is event ID. So back here, um, book event is the name and I need to pass an argument which is event ID. And uh, that argument is my ID of course and uh, I will inject this here between my quotes. Now for that here I will access this state selected event underscore ID. That is just the ID I want to forward. And then I will um, call book event. Now let's have a look at the schema again. We see we get back a booking object. And that booking object here has an ID, has information about the event we booked, about the user who booked it, and um, it has these two timestamps here. Now let's not fetch um, the event and user information, but I want to have the, the date and I want to have the created at and updated at timestamps here, let's say. So this is my book event handler query. Now then we execute this query. We will have to authorize ourselves, uh, ourselves. So we'll add the authorization header here again, just as we did it for creating an event. So we can copy that logic here. The token is fetched from the context. So here, let's set this to a value of um, bearer token, or to be precise here, this context token. Then uh, here we make our default checks and for now I will just console log response data. Um, is lo loading uh, is something I don't need to manage here because I never set it to true here. So we should be able to actually now execute this request already and make a booking. Now the user for whom the booking is made is determined on the server based on the token we pass to the server because if you remember the um, the videos where we created the API, on the server we do actually extract the user ID for the given token. Now first problem is I can't view the details here if I'm not logged in and I can click book here but actually if I'm not logged in I should not be able to book. So that's a tiny change I will make first of all before we test this because it's really something I don't want to have here. Um, the confirm text here will actually be based on my auth status. So here I can check this context token and if I do have one, then I'll set book as a text, otherwise I'll just set it to confirm. Now in on confirm, the book event handler is executed, but in there I will basically not do anything if I'm not logged in. So if not this context token, if I don't have a token, then I will return here the one thing I will do is, though, I will call set state and set selected event to null. By the way, that is also something I want to do when I'm done making my request uh, to book an event because that will close the modal. So now with that, let's reload here. View details and click confirm. Nothing happens. Let's now log in and uh, wait for this to reload. Now here I see book and if I click book, this doesn't look too bad. Um, let's have a look at our console log here. 
I got book event back and there I have all that data. Perfect. So this works. We're able to book an event. We can make a booking. Now, of course, one and the same user can um, make multiple bookings here. As you can tell, I, I made another booking, but that's actually something I'm fine here. Um, you could have an event um, which you can book multiple times because maybe you're signing up family members. Um, obviously, you can refine this in many, many ways. I want to show you the, the bigger picture, how all these things work together and how we do connect our React frontend to the GraphQL backend. And therefore, I'm happy with this. Now, on the bookings page, it now would make sense to view the bookings to at least have a very basic first representation of the bookings made. And therefore, on this bookings page, right when we load it actually, so in component did mount, I want to load all available bookings. I will also need a state here. And in my state, I want to have is loading so that I can show a loading indicator and the bookings, which is um, initially. An, uh, an empty array. So just as in the event page, where I also have my events, which initially is an empty array, here in the bookings page, I have my bookings. Now, I will add a new method, fetch bookings. And uh, that will just do that. It will uh, fetch my bookings. So I can go to the events page again. And then here, copy that uh, logic we used for fetching the events, let's say, where we construct the request body and then make the request and do the same in here. And yes, of course, you can outsource all these API calls into a separate file to keep your event uh, JS file a bit leaner. That would be possible, of course. So now here in the bookings JS file, we got the request body, we make a query. Let's have a look at our schema again. There we see we can make a query to, uh, to, to bookings, excuse me, and we get back a list, an array of bookings. We don't need to pass any arguments. So I will make a request to bookings here. And uh, now for every booking which I get back, I am interested in my ID, in my, let's say, created at timestamp. And then if we have a look at the schema again, we see that um, a booking there has this event field, right? And I want to fetch some information about that event too. So here I will access event and for the nested data there, I will uh, fetch the ID and the title and let's say the date because maybe that would be information that makes sense to be displayed uh, on a booking. Then we make the request here. And I said, is loading to false? I write at the start here, I want to set it to true. So I will call this set state is loading and set it to true. And then thereafter, I set it to false. And of course, I don't update my events here, but my bookings. So all I get back here in all these fields is bookings. And I should have a bookings field in the data field of my response because bookings is the name of the query. So now I'm getting my bookings here. Now to see whether that worked or not, let me throw in a very simple unordered list where I access this state bookings and map each booking into a list item without any styling. So really just to see if it works. Where I output booking, event, title, and then maybe a hyphen and then booking um, created at. Yeah, that is what I fetch here, created at. Maybe already wrapped in a date constructor so that we can call to local date string. So this is what I want to output in my bookings uh, file. Now let me log in because I can only view bookings if I'm logged in. And let's go to bookings here. And I don't see anything. Now let's check the network tab. And uh, there I don't have any requests. Um, which makes a lot of sense because I did add my fetch bookings method, but of course I'm not calling it here in component did mount. That this is something I should do. So here I should call this fetch bookings. And now let's save that and log back in. And by the way, there is another issue you'll face. If you log in and you go to bookings before your events loaded, you'll get an error um, when the event data is there that try to update a component which isn't mounted anymore. We can take uh, care about this later. Um, here I got an error 
An internal server error. Let's see what's wrong. Message unauthenticated. And that makes sense because I'm not passing my token here with my bookings fetch request. I should have my authorization header here where I send bearer and then the token. But this context token also wouldn't work in the bookings.js file because I haven't connected this file with the um, off context yet. So therefore, let's import the off context from context off context and connect it with the static context type. So static context type equals off context. And now we connected this bookings component to the context we have. And therefore, we can access this context and that will refer to our off context. And there we have the token, which we can now um, attach. So therefore, let's give this another try and see if it now works. If I do log in here and I go to bookings, let's ignore the error which is about to come up. And after some time, I see my bookings, which is good. Now, I also forgot to add my key and we got that other error. So first of all, let me quickly add that key here so that for every booking, I add the ID as a key. But more importantly, in events, if I navigate away, so if I unmount this component, I don't want to continue with my um, HTTP request or I'm not interested in the response anymore, at least. So I want to add some code that basically ignores any response given back to me. For that, I will add a new property, not a state actually, but a new property to the events page component, which I'll name is active. And uh, by default, that is true. Now, when I unmount this component, and uh, for that, let's say right before render here, I will add component will unmount. So when I'm about to unmount, I will call this is active and set it to false. And now in fetch events here, this method, when I try to call set state here, also in the error case, I will first of all check if this is active. And only if it is active, I will go ahead and make that state update. So check if this is active and only update the state if this component is active. And this should make sure that we're not trying to call set state and therefore update the component if it isn't active anymore. So now if I submit this and I go to bookings, we shouldn't see any error. And after a while, and unfortunately my network is really slow right now, after a while we should just see the bookings. So that's great. Now in the meantime, until we see them, let's at least show that spinner, which we already have, so why don't we use it? Here in the bookings component, I will add a React fragment here for now so that I can have multiple sibling top level elements. And then I will import my spinner. So import spinner from components, spinner, spinner. And let's use that spinner then as long as we are loading. So down there, we can check this state is loading. And if we are loading, then I will display my spinner here. Otherwise, if we're not loading anymore, I will display that unordered list because it means we have the data to display or we should have it at least. So let me log in again, go to bookings. And now we see that spinner here too. And again, unfortunately, my network here is really slow at the moment. But then we'll see our bookings appear here. There they are. Obviously, styling is not perfect, but we can see them at least. So with that, we are able to um, add events, to view events, to um, load our bookings and to make a booking. Um, first of all, that is also not that unimportant, I'd say. A lot of cool stuff added. Missing, of course, is a nicer style for our bookings here. And then um, a possibility for us to cancel them. Because that, if we have a look at our schema, is of course the remaining part. We now have create event covered, create user covered, book event covered, events, bookings, and login is all used. Cancel booking is missing. That is what we will continue on in the next videos.